Hello, everyone. Hey, we had some technical difficulties on the last recording. So we have today a part one and part two. This is going to be part two of the actual teaching, which is only going to be about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, but about 10 minutes or so. Uh, so let me pick up where we left off. Uh, there was a question that was asked to Sister Seda about how she got better playing foosball. And she said, well, when she started out, she wasn't that great. But the more she kept on practicing and practicing, she became better. And don't you know that's how it is and should be for all of us. Our walk in Christ is not an instant holiness, but as we continue to walk and learn God's word more and more, we should become better uh, uh, Christian and saints of God uh, in our walk. We should not be where we were three and a half years ago and still talking the same way, doing the same things and having no sign of growth. Here's a few things I want to bring out. When we were talking about the lesson, it's a done deal. Let me read to you an actual definition of it's a done deal. It is an irrevocable agreement between one or more parties. It involves making an agreement that cannot be reversed. It is a concrete clad agreement that cannot be reversed. It must be accomplished. And here's the other part of it. Uh, there are no exceptions to the rule. So again, if you say you're going to do something in Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, God talks about when you make a vow to do something, be sure that you will do it because you're held accountable to that. Again, it is very important that we realize that we're in covenant with God. In other words, we're in, uh, in agreement with God, which is a done deal. It is sealed by his word and God's word is immutable. Some points I want to bring out that I discussed earlier today uh, with the part one is, is this. First, number one, um, don't rebel against God's authority. Whoever that is, if they are living a godly life and they are a person of God, don't rebel because the Bible said all authorities that be are of God. And listen, you cannot rebel against the authority and not be rebelling against God. The next one is, <clears throat> number two, your position is not what makes you great. It is not your position. You should make the position great, not the position make you great. Just because you're called a pastor or an elder or evangelist or whatever that position is, that doesn't make you great. If you're great, you'll make the position great because you'll obey and be found doing what the actual position entails. Number three, uh, always try to exceed what people expect out of you. But here's the other part also. Don't allow yourself to get exalted. Don't allow yourself to get exalted. We all are who we are by the grace of God, and that is it by the grace of God. Next one. Let God be the one to take vengeance out on people, not you yourself. Because when we do that, we take it out of God's hand when we want to show our vengeance. And then we can get ourselves in a worse predicament. Next point is, don't fret because of evildoers. Just realize, as I was mentioning in that first part of that number, uh, number one first part of... Uh, the lesson, it's a done deal. Even doers, God's going to deal with them in due time and in his time. And it'd be better that he deals with them than you would. Next point is, uh, you can't make people become obedient. You can't. It doesn't matter how much you work with them and do things for them and everything. They have to have a mind to do this. And that's why I was saying earlier you, you know, we have to we have to make up our own mind to serve God. It's not like God's just going to keep on rewarding us and we're not going to do anything to show our appreciation for him. When you appreciate someone, you want to show them through your works. Because like the Bible says, faith without works is dead being left alone. Next point is, uh, let's see. Uh, those that, I have, to, I have to look beyond my little notes here. Uh, those that rebel against God are going to be dealt with. Bible says it like this, because judgment is not given expediently, the people continue in their sins. I want you to know 
God's judgment is going to come. Just like it was in this story here. That let me let you know what happened so you'll get a better grasp of what's taking place. So Korah had gotten with himself, Dathan, and also uh, Abimram. And the three of them conspired against Moses and Aaron and said they should not have been in these positions. They were jealous of them. And the Bible says jealousy is as cruel as the grave. And because they were jealous of Moses and uh, uh, Dathan, I mean, they were jealous of Moses and Aaron, they wanted to have them destroyed. And they got 250 of these other royal prince, and these were leaders that were in that time, and they were other leaders, and they said, no, we don't want Moses to be our leader. They did not want to accept any accountability that the reason that they were in the wilderness for 40 years instead of just two weeks is because of their disobedience. And listen here, we notice how Moses interceded and prayed for them. Well, Moses said on the next day, God will make the separation and show who's his people from theirs. And on the next day, all the people got their center, censers, which is like I said, this candlestick that they put in this basin and it would be a light. And it was before they were to offer themselves and offer a sacrifice for people. That's how it was supposed to be used in the temple. And instead of that, uh, God told Moses and Aaron, get as far away from the people as possible and get your people with them. And there were thousands that followed for it. The Bible says that the earth opened up and swallowed all of the people that followed Korah, their family, Korah's wives, his children, uh, all of his belonging, everything they had was swallowed up and they all fell to the center of the earth. And you all know that is where hell is. They literally fell there alive. And then the Bible says the earth closed itself up. It's almost as if they did not exist. And let me just say this. It's a fearful thing to fall into the judgment's hand, judgment hands of the Almighty God. When God gets through judging anyone, it had been better they not even have been created. Because when God's judgment falls on us, it can be a very horrible thing. As you saw what happened to Korah. God literally swallowed him up and destroyed all of them. And they all died. While they were alive, they fell straight down in the hell and died. That's serious. Here's another thing you need to know also is that those 250 prince that rose up against Moses, God set fire down from heaven and destroyed all of them. And listen, notice how there was no, no one left that was rebellious. Every single person that was rebellious was destroyed. Every single one. So God is a God of order, but he is a God of judgment also. Uh, at that point there, that's the part I wanted to be able to uh, uh, share with you all because it wasn't put into that first message because of the technical difficulty that we ran into. But again, we should know out of this lesson, God is on our side. It should encourage us to always be appreciative of all that God's done and should let us know, let's not get on our own or get exalted and turn against God, nor the things that he's appointed others to do for him. Amen. So without any further ado, thank you all for joining me with this for this part two of It's a Done Deal. I really appreciate it. God bless you. I'll be posting this also. And so have a wonderful day. And I pray, I pray that God will continue to bless each and every one of you. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.